All right, hello everyone. Today we're going to be graphing exponential and logarithmic functions. It's a long video, so strap yourselves in and here we go. All right, so we are told we need to graph the function y equals 2 to the x. Okay, now when we do something like this, again, and again, this graph paper I have I in the description below, I will put a link to, so you'll be able to download this graph paper and copy it and print it and do whatever you need to do. So, okay. Now, what we're gonna do, okay, is we're gonna start. Now notice I've got this, this chart down here divvied up into parts. We have the y equals b to the x. Then we have the logarithmic function. Then we have any shifts that need to happen. And then we have the y multiplier. So there's four different things. Now for this first example, because we're only going to be graphing 2 to the x, I'm not going to need any of this. Okay. So we're going to start. Now when we do something like this, I always start with the easiest ones of all. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Yeah. You got stickers on that? All right. Yeah, so we just put that in. And all we're going to do is we're going to put these values in for the x. So 2 to the negative first. Remember, that's going to be 1 over 2. So this is 1 half. Okay, then I'm going to do 2 to the 0, which is 1. I'm going to put 2 to the first, which is 2. And I'm going to do 2 squared, which is equal to 4. Okay, so now that I have that, now these are my x, y coordinates. So my first one, negative 1 by a half. So I'm going to kind of zoom in on this a little bit here so I can graph it a little easier. Okay, so negative 1 by a half is right about here-ish. I know it's going to be hard with my pen here. Okay, we're going to do 0, 1. Okay, then we're going to do, okay, so we're going to do 1, 2, and we're going to do 2, 4. And we all know an exponential function, okay, it's going to come down, oh. it's going to be kind of tricky here with my pen here and having to do this. But it's going to ride along the x-axis and go upwards based on these points. But it's never, ever actually going to go below the x-axis. Okay? So our graph is going to look something like this. Now, the other part of this is going to be identifying the domain and the range. Okay? Now, domain. Remember, domain stands for any restrictions on the x's. So were there any restrictions or value of x that I can plug in that I can't have? The answer is no. So that's going to be all real numbers. Oops, let me use a different color. So That's going to be all real numbers, or funky r as I call it. Now my range values, again, realize again, it may look like it because my graph's pretty crappy. But again, my y values are never, ever, ever going to get to the y-axis. They're going to get close to being y equaling 0, but never quite make it there. So we're going to declare that y's have to be greater than 0. So there's my range for this. Okay, It's not going to be equals to because it never actually hits 0. Okay, So we're going to be close to 0. That's why we don't use the equals and the greater than. And the y values are then going upwards. Okay, So there's our first one. Okay, now for this one. This is where it gets a little more interesting. Now we're doing log base 2 to the x. Okay, so when I do something like this, okay, I start with my base of x. So my base is going to be 2 to the x. Okay, so base 2 raised to the x power. We're going to start by filling in this part of the chart. Now, so I'm going to, so I'm going to use my usual. What? Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I should make that bigger so we can, I can actually see it here. Let's erase this. Let me try again. Okay, so we're going to do negative 1, 
zero, one, and two. Okay, and now like we just did in the last problem, we're gonna do our two to the x. So two to the negative first is one half. Two to the zero is one. Two to the first is two, and two squared is equal to four. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this in. Okay, so in my little chart here, I'm gonna have one half, I'm gonna have one, two, and four. All right, now we go to the next part. We're gonna do the log. Now re remember that a logarithm is an inverse of this, the b of x function. So in English, what we're basically gonna do for my log of b is we're just gonna flip flop this. So this is now gonna become one half by negative one. It's going to become 1, 0. It's going to become 2, 1. And it's going to become 4, 2. Now, since we're graphing the log, according to this, we're graphing log... Oh, shoot. <laughs> Try that again. Since we're trying to graph log base 2 of x, these are the values here that we're going to graph. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to kind of close this in a little bit so I can see it and get my pen on it really well. All right, so let's graph 1 half by negative 1. So 1 half x, negative 1 on the y. So right about here. Then we're going to do 1, 0. We're going to do 2, 1. And we're going to do 4, 2. Okay. So now my graph is going to do something this okay so here's our graph okay so I'm gonna pull this back a little bit because now we have to do our domain and our range now realize because we did an inverse function okay in the other one in our original one the domain was funky r my range was all real numbers but this time, notice how my y values go anywhere. Because it fl uh, it's an inverse, my range has now become funky r. Because again, my y's are going to continue going down this way. And my y's are going to continue going up out x on the, on the y's this way. So there's no stop in the y's. It's the x's that have the problem here. Okay. So notice how we're going to get pretty close to being x is 0, but we're never going to go into the negatives. So therefore, we have to declare that x's are going to be greater than 0 here. Okay, so again, notice the difference. When we had the other one, these were flip-flop. When it was a basic exponential growth or decay model, the domain was funky r, my range was y's are greater than 0. But because they're inverses, these two instances flip-flop. All right, so I got another one. All right, so again, we're going to graph another exponential, okay? So I'm going to start because this is an exponential. We're not going to be using this stuff right here. So we're going to focus solely here. So again, what I usually do is I start with the basic ones. So we're going to do negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so we're going to do 3 to the negative first, 3 to the 0, 3 to the first, 3 squared. So 3 to the negative first is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is 9. So these are what go into my y values of my table. So we're going to have one third, one, three, nine. Okay, so now we're going to graph this stuff. Oops. Come on, there we go. All right, so let's start. We're going to graph negative one by a third. So negative one by a third. Right about there ish. 
zero one. We have one three. And then two nine. So graphing this again, we're going to come down. Again, oh, that's awful. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible here. Okay, I see how well I can do this time. It's pretty good. So again, not exactly the best graph because I'm trying to do this like this with pen and stuff. Okay, so now looking at this graph again, we got to identify our domain and our range. <clears throat> so again, domain, because this was a typical exponential graph. Again, there's no restriction on x. Oops. I can put in any value of x I want. Okay, so my domain is going to be all real numbers, the funky r. My range is, okay, now again, we're going to get cl pretty close to y being 0, but not quite get there. And all my y values are going upwards from there. So my y's are going to be greater than 0. And that's that one. All right, so now, like I said, we're now going to graph log 3 of x. So again, we will be incorporating both this. Again, there's no shift, and I'll explain what that looks like in a little bit. So we're going to ignore this right now. So let's start again. Base, I'm going to do, do 3 to the x as my base to start. So again, like we did, did in the previous problem. Oops, hey, 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 stop that. I'm going to do negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And we know that 3 to the negative first is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3, 9. Okay, now we're going to do the logarithm, which means, again, we're just going to take these guys and flip-flop them. So 1 third by negative 1. We're going to have 1, 0. We're going to have 3 by 1. We're going to have 9 by 2. Okay, so let's go here and let's graph those up. So let's go one third by negative one. One third by negative one, right about here ish. One zero, three one, nine by two. Right, but you don't need the magnifying glass. Why don't you go give that back to Nana? All right, so it looks like this. Okay, so our graph's going to do something like this. Okay, so my domains. Okay, well, let's start with the range because normally when we do stuff like this, the domain is all real. For now, we're going to declare that the ranges are all real. Now, for this part, okay, my x's, we're going to be restricted to being greater than 0. So my x is greater than or equal to, or not equal to, I'm sorry, because we never quite hit the x-axis, so it's just going to be greater than 0. Oh, so okay. Sweet. All right, now in this one, we are now involving a shift. Yeah, no, but this is my pen. Okay, so again, we're not going to need the y multiplier part, but we're going to start incorporating the shift. Okay, now we'll get to that in a minute. So we're going to start off just like we normally would. Okay, so nothing's changed with this. So we're going to start with we're going to start with our base, and again, since it's base three, we're going to go three to the x. Okay, so we're going to go here. And we're going to use our typical values. So negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And as we all know, 3 to the negative first is 1 third. 
three to the uh, three to the zero is one, three to the first is three, three squared is nine. Now then we're incorporating the logarithmic movement. Okay, so again we're just gonna flip flop these. So we're gonna have one third by negative one. We're gonna have one zero. We're gonna have three one. We're gonna have nine. Now, here's where the shift comes in. Okay, we have to look at what we have here. We have to be very careful. Now, because this right here indicates my shift, it's in the parentheses, which means it's solely for the X. Okay, if we're doing a Y shift, then it would there will be no parentheses. It would look like this. Okay, but because they used a parentheses, they're indicating that this shift is solely for the x now when it's in the parentheses just like when you deal with most parentheses you have to do the opposite of what's here so this is going to be a plus four on the shift of x so when i do this okay typically when i'm filling in my chart okay i usually say plus four no shift on the y so all you're going to do is add four to all your x's. So this is four and one third. Third. This is gonna be a now a five. This is gonna now be a seven. And this is gonna be a 13. <clears throat> now, since there's no shift on y, I'm gonna keep that is. So negative one, zero, one, two. Oh, two. And now these are the values that I'm gonna throw into my graph. Yeah. So let's go to four and a third. So four and a third by negative one. Right. Oops. Hold on. There we go. It's going to be right there. We're going to do five zero. We're going to do seven by one. Oh, that's six one. Seven one. And 13 by two is off my table, so I'm not going to graph it. So it's going to kind of come in like this. And kind of go down like this. Okay. So now let's do our domain and range. Leave that kitty alone. He's going to bite you. So my domains. Again, let's do a normal domain and range. Again, typically the domain is funky R. Yeah, he's cute. The range values are now a funky R because, again, the fact that we are dealing with an inverse of a normal function domain now this time again we're going to get close to four i'm going to say again pretty we're estimating right now so we're going to get close to four not quite get there so i'm going to declare that x is going to be greater than four in this case <clears throat> all right so that's how we do a shift like that now let's keep going all right so again another x shift Okay, <clears throat> so again, we're going to be working base three. So let's start negative one, zero, one, and two. So we know it's going to be one third. It's going to be one, three, nine. Okay, let's do the logarithmic function. So it's one third by negative one. It's going to be 1, 0, 3, 1, 9, 2. All right, now let's take a look at what we had for our problem here. And we are told that we're going to have x plus 2. It's in the parentheses, so it's indicating an x shift. And again, we do the opposite of what's shown here. So we're going to do a shift of negative 2 on the x. I'm going to kind of swing my thing over here. Okay. And we're going to put a shift of negative 2 on the X. No shift on the Y. Okay, so we're going to be subtracting 2. So 1 third minus 2. It's going to be negative 1 and 2 thirds. Thirds. 
we're gonna have a negative one. We're gonna have a one and a seven. Again, I'm subtracting two, this two, from my x val original x values. <clears throat> now the y values are negative one, zero, one, two. And again, there is no y multiplier yet. Okay, so let's bring this up. Okay, let's start graphing, graphing all this up. So let's go to negative one and two thirds by negative one. So right about here ish. Negative one zero. We're gonna have one one. And we're gonna have seven two. Go oh, come on, pen shut off. Okay, so when I graph this. And do something like this. <clears throat> okay. Okay, now again, this is do our domain and range here. So, domain range. <clears throat> now, again, typically my domain is all reals, but since we're doing an inverse function of logarithm, my ranges are funky R. Now my domain values, again, looks like we're gonna be at negative one. So X's will be greater than negative one. Okay, so there's that. Okay, let's continue on, we've got a lot to do still. <clears throat> All right, now in this case, we're gonna have a Y shift. So, just, so again, I'm going to get rid of the multiplier. We don't need that. We do need everything else. We're still going to work log base 3. So, again, let's start with our basics. So, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I use always, you typically always use those. They're the easiest to work with. So, 3 to the negative first is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is 9. Logarithm. So we're going to flip these. So we're going to have 1 third by negative 1. We're going to have 1 zero. We're going to have 3 by 1. We're going to have 9 by 2. So again, pretty much what we've been working with for the past few problems. I'm trying to keep this the same. So not a whole lot's changing, especially with shifting and everything else. I'm trying to keep things constant. All right, now this time, let's talk about our shift. Notice how this time, this is not in a parenthesis, which means it is not an X shift. We're dealing with a Y shift. And just like everything else that we have dealt with, okay, because this is a plus 2 and it's outside the parenthesis, it's going to stay a plus 2. So this says we're not going to have an X shift. We're going to have a Y shift of plus 2. All right, so let's scooch in here. Let's go down here. So again, just like we did with the X shift, we're going to take our Y values. Oops, sorry about that. We're going to take our Y values and just add 2 to it. So we're going to have 1 third by, let's see, negative one plus two is one. I know. So we're gonna have zero plus two, which is two. One plus two is three. And we're gonna have nine by five. So these are the coordinates we're gonna graph. Okay, so let's go, let's do this up. One third by one. So one third by one right about here. Okay, one by two, right here. Three by three. And nine by five. Okay, so it's gonna do something like this. So again, my graph's gonna do something like that. All right, so let's identify our domain and range here. OK, 
Okay, so again, normally we would say domain is funky R, but again, because we are dealing with an inverse, our range is funky R. Domains, again, looks like we're going to get close to X being zero, but not quite go past that. So X's are going to be greater than zero. All right. And now we're ready for the next one. Okay, so now with this one, I'm going to kind of change things up a little bit here. We do have two shifts that we're gonna work on. So we do have that. And then on top of that, I am switching it up to log base two. So again, we got quite a few changes going on here. But again, let's take this one step at a time. So first off, we're gonna be working base two. So two to the negative one, two to the zero, two to the first, and two squared, okay? So we know this is gonna be one half, it's going to be 1, it's going to be 2, and it's going to be 4. So these are the values that are going to my B of X table. Okay. <clears throat> so I know it's going to be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 2. It's going to be 1 half, 1, 2, 4. Okay. So there's our B of X. <clears throat> now for our log, let's do our inverse. We flip it. So one half, one, two, four. I'm gonna have negative one, zero, one, two. <clears throat> okay, so now we have to worry about our shifts. So let's take a look at that. Now notice, like I said before, we have two shifts. We're gonna have our X shift and we're gonna have our Y shift. So in this case, my X shift, remember, is gonna be opposite of what's in here. So this is gonna be a positive one on the X. Okay, my Y is gonna be at minus four. Okay, so that's our shifts that are gonna be involved here. We're not still doing a multiplier yet, so. Got to get rid of that. All right, so let's put this in. So we're going to add one to my x's. So we're going to have one and a half, two, three, five. We're going to subtract four from the y's. So we're going to go negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two. Okay, so these are the positions that we're going to graph up. So let's do that. Let me kind of scooch this a little here. All right, so here we go. One and a half by negative five. So one and a half X down five on the Y. Okay, then we're going to do, um, let's do two by negative four. Okay, three by negative three. And then we're going to have 5 by negative 2. So we're going to do this. <clears throat> so our graph is going to look something like this. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's do our domain and range. Okay, so my domain value, again, typically domain is funky R, but since it's an inverse function, our range is funky R. Domain, again, I would say we're going to go up to about 1, but not quite get there, so X's will be greater than 1. See, nothing too crazy, nothing too strenuous. Okay, so let's continue on. All right, another shift, dual shifting going on here. So again, we're gonna start, we're gonna work in base two. So just like we did in the last problem, so I'm gonna come down here, oops. So I know this is negative, oops. Negative one, zero, one, and two. Now since we're working base two, this is gonna be one half, one, Two to the first is two, two squared is four. 
Now it's a logarithmic function, so we're going to inverse this. So we're going to have 1 half by negative 1. We're going to have 1 by 0. We're going to have 2 by 1. 1. And we're going to have 4 by 2. All right, now let's back out. Let's take a look at our shifting this time. Okay, so I see that we're going to have an X shift and we're going to have a Y shift. Now, since the X shift was in parentheses, we're going to do the opposite, so negative 2. Our Y shift is going to be the same as minus 1. All right, so we have everything we need. We're not doing a multiplier. Okay, so I don't need this. All right, so yeah, let's get started. So we're going to take our x's and minus 2. This will be negative 1 and 1 half. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 minus 2 is 2. The y's, we're going to deduct 1. So we're going to have minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1. All right, so let's graph this up. So negative one and a half by negative two. Let's do negative one by negative one. Zero, zero, and two, one. So here comes my graph. Do something like this. Okay. So now, now that we have that, just kind of scooch this back a little bit here. All right, so let's go domain and range. So again, my domain, because again, typically domain is all reals, but we it's an inverse function. We're going to do range is all reals because there's no restriction on y this time. The x's, again, it looks like we're going to go up to negative 2, but never quite reach it. So x's will be greater than negative 2. So there's that one. All right, let's take a look at another one. We're almost done. Bear with me. All right, something a little bit different here. Notice our base is a fraction. So we're going to have 1 half as my base. So what I'm going to do is kind of work our x values a little backwards. Because we really don't want to be graphing fractions. That gets pretty ugly. But what if I do this? Typically, my x values, I would do 1 half to the negative first. But I'm going to do 1 half to the first. And then by doing so, that's 1 half. If I take 1 half to the 0th power, we get 1. No big deal. Now, here's where, again, my switch happens. We're going to do this to the negative first power. Now, typically... We did that up here, but I'm going to kind of flip-flop the signs here because now this two, one half to the negative first is two. Then if I do one half to the negative second power, that's four. It's a lot nicer to graph things like this than it would be one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, etc. Okay, so that's what I suggest you do. We make this up here a positive. Let me hold on. Yeah, so we would make this a positive instead of a negative one, and then these guys down here become negatives instead of normally positive. So then that way, we're winding up with nice numbers most of the time. Okay? All right, so let's fill in our table. Oops, I don't know why that didn't link in like that. It's supposed to. Okay, so we're going to have 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. So we're going to have 1 half, we're going to have 1, 2, 4. Okay, now because this was a logarithm, we are going to flip these. So we're going to have 1 half by 1. We're going to have 1, 0. We're going to have 2 by negative 1. And we're going to have 4 by negative 2. 
Okay, I'm going to kind of scooch that over there. I don't know why it's not shrinking for me here. Now, again, because looking at my X, I don't have anything else here. Whoops. Doesn't help. Since there's no shifting, I don't have to worry about this. Okay. So let's go right to our graphs. Hmm. Come on. Oh, why are you going crazy here? There we go. Okay, so let's graph this up. One half by one. Zero, one. Or correction, one, zero. Sorry. Oh, wait, I went the wrong spot. Sorry about that. I went to negative one half. Let's try that again. One half by one. One, zero. Two, negative one. Four, two. Now I notice something weird's happening here. Okay, my graph's gonna do something like this this time. Okay, so now when we do our domain and range, we've got to be careful. Now again, typically again, domain is funky R, but since it's an inverse, all reals are gonna apply here to the Y. It's the domains. Well, not really, again, too crazy here, because look, we're starting around zero, and which direction are my x values going? They're going upwards still. Even though my y's look like they're going down, but remember, it continues upwards too, x's are still going to be greater than zero. Okay? So, a little bit trickier, but again, nothing too catastrophic. Right, let's take a look at another one. All right, so we're going y to the one-fourth of x. Okay, so let's start. Let's get our base. Base is one-fourth. Now, again, because it's a fraction, I'm going to do the opposite for my x's. So 1, we're going to do one-fourth to the 0, one-fourth to the negative first, and one-fourth to the negative second. So this is one-fourth, 1, one Four, sixteen. Okay, so let's do this up. Let's put this in our table here. So again, note the difference. We went one, zero, negative one, negative two, one fourth, one, four, sixteen. Now, because it is a logarithm, we're going to do our inverse. One fourth, one, one zero, four by negative one, and sixteen by negative two. Now, as we kind of do this, looking at my x's, I don't have a shift here, so there's nothing to worry about here. So let's graph this up. So we're going to have one fourth by one. Oh, shoot. Try this again. One zero. Okay, and we'll graph four by negative one. Right about here. And 16 by negative two is way off my table. Okay, so our graph's going to come down like this. Okay, and it's going to get kind of dicey here. So it's going to do something like this. Oh, you stupid thing. So it's going to do something like that. Okay, let me get my eraser here and see if I can clean that up. Yeah, there we go. That looks much better. Okay. <clears throat> So let's back it out. Okay. So now let's do our domain and range. So again, any restrictions on the Y? No, because typically domain is funky R, but now the range will be because it's an inverse. Domains, again, we're pretty close to X being zero, but not quite getting there. So my domain is X is greater than zero. Okay. All right, let's keep going. We're almost done, a few more slides. All right, now we're gonna graph e to the x. Now again, technically, we're gonna treat this like we did if we had like three to the x. 
So again, this doesn't have a logarithm, it doesn't have a shift, and doesn't have a multiplier. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do what we typically will do here. Okay, so let me scooch in here. Okay, so we're going to have negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to identify e, e to the fir uh, negative first power, e to all that fun stuff. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay, so you will need your calculator for this because unless you know what the e to the powers are off the top of your head. So looking at my calculator here, if I do e to the negative first, I get 0.3678. So let's do 0.368. Okay, if I put 0 in, e to the 0th power is just 1. If I do e to the first, it's going to be 2.718. And if I do two square uh, e squared, I'm going to get seven point three eight nine. Okay, so I have something like this. So I have my starting points here. So now I'm going to graph those points up. Nothing too crazy. Again, just doing what we've been doing. Nothing too strenuous here. Okay, so we're going to do negative one by point three eight. So we can make it close, uh, right about here-ish, a little under a half. Zero, one. One by 2.7. And then two by 7.38. No, that's six, sorry. Six, seven point three, right about here-ish. Okay. So then we're going to graph this down. So bring it down. Oh, that's awful. Whoop. Slipped. And let me clean this up a little bit here. Because that looks terrible too. Let me just fix that. I didn't like how it looked. So something like that. Okay, <clears throat> that looks better. All right, so let's do our domain and range. Now again, any restrictions on the x's this time? This is a typical base function. So the answer is no. So domain is unrestricted, so it is all reals. My y's this time, because again, I'm getting close to the, z to the y equaling zero, but not quite getting there. We declare that y's are greater than zero. And there's that one. See, nothing too different except we're dealing with the e, which you need your calculator for. All right, so now we're going to do the natural log of x. Okay, now again, remember your base. Your base for natural log is e. So again, when we're doing this part, again, it's just like the last problem. We're doing e to the x here. Okay. So let's zoom in on this. So this is e to the x. So we're going to do, oops. So let's do negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. My y's, again, we're going to do 0 0.368. 1, 1 is 2.718. And 2 is 7.389. And again, we all we got all that from the last problem. Now, logarithm. Again, instead of log, it's ln, but still, it's the same idea. We're going to just flip-flop this. So this becomes 0.368 by negative 1. 1 by 0. 2.718. By one and seven point three eight nine by two. Okay, so now we're just graphing this. Okay, 
scooch this over a little bit. Okay, so let's do this up. <clears throat> so, 0.368 by negative 1. Right about here. 1, 0. 2.78, or 7, 1 by 1. And 7.389 by 2. Okay, so it looks something like that. All right, so let's do domain and range. Now again, before, when it was a typical exponential, domain was all reals. This time, the range will be all reals. The x's, now again, we do have restrictions on x. Our x values have to be greater than about 0 in this case. We're not going to quite get to 0, and that's okay. So, and there's that. So, see, nothing too catastrophically different. It's just instead of using numbers, they used e to the, and that's all there is to it. All right, now this one's got everything. We have a scalar multiplier. We have a base. We have shifting. We have everything going on here. So let's take a look at everything here. Let's start with our base. We're starting base 2. Okay, so we're going to do our normal stuff here. So negative, whoop, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Now, since we're doing base 2, 2 to the negative first is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. Okay, now for our logarithm. Again, we're just going to flip-flop these. 1 half by negative 1. 1, 0. 2 by 1. 4 by 2. Now let's take a look at our shifting this time here. Okay, so we have the x plus 1 there. We have a negative 3 here. So remember, we're going to do the opposite of what's in... Oops, I want to keep these the same color here. So we're going to do the opposite of what's in the parentheses. So that's a negative 1 on the x. And we are going to have a negative 3 shift for the y. All right, so let's bring this over here. We'll take a look at our x's and our y's. So our x's, we're going to just subtract 1. So it'll be negative 1 half. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. For the y shift... Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So again, all stuff we've done before. Now for our new thing to look at. We have this. A multiplier of 2. Okay. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our y values and we're going to times it by a value of positive 2. Okay, so let's bring it here. So we're going to take our y's and just times by 2. So our x values don't change. Okay, so this is going to become negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2. Again, we're only affecting the y's here. Okay. So we're going to ignore this now. And my coordinates are going to be like 1 half by negative 8, 0 by negative 6, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's graph this up. Okay, so I have negative 1 half by negative 8. Negative 1 half, negative 8, way down here. Oh, shoot. Did it again. Right there. Then we're going to have 0 by negative 6. We're going to have 1 by negative 4. And then we're going to have 3 by negative 2. OK, 
Okay, so here's your graph. Looks something like that. All right, so let's take a look at our domain and range here. Okay, so again, range. Now, typically my domain is all reals, but since it's a logarithm, my ranges are all reals. My x's, taking a look at my x's, I get close to negative 1, but I'm never going to quite really get there. So I'm going to declare that x's are going to be greater than negative 1. And there's that one. Again, scalar multiplier doesn't really do much of anything different. It just tweaks your y values in the end. That's all. All right, here we go, another one with a scalar multiplier. So again, let's take a look. Again, I tried to keep this one a little bit the same, so we're gonna start with base two. So let's come down here to fill in my chart. So we're gonna have negative one, zero, one, two. Two to the negative first is one half. Two to the zero is one. Two to the first is two. Two squared is four. Pretty easy. All right, now, logarithm, flip this. So one half by negative one, one by zero, two by one, four by two. All right, now, let's go take a look at our shifting. Okay, so we're going to have an x plus 1, okay, and then we have minus 3 on the y shift. So this says opposite of here, we're going to subtract 1. Here we're going to minus 3. So my x shift is minus 1. My y shift is minus 3. All right, so let's move in and do that. All right, so we're going to subtract 1 from my log x values. So it'll be negative one half. Whoops. We're gonna have zero. We're gonna have one. We're gonna have three. For the y values, we're just gonna subtract three. So negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. All right. Now let's take a look at our multiplier here. We have a y multiplier of negative 1. So my multiplier of negative 1 here. So again, all we're going to do is take our y values and times them by negative 1. So this becomes negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. Whoops. 4. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. All right, so here we go. Let's start graphing up negative one half by four. We have zero by three. Then we have one by two. Then we have three by one. Okay. Hey, where'd my graph go here? There it is. So it's going to look something like that. <clears throat> Fix that point a little bit. Let it look like trash. Okay, so it looks something like that. <clears throat> All right, so let's do our domain and range here. Domain, range... I oh, forgot my arrow here. Sorry about that. All right, so here we go. Finish this up. Now, again, range is going to be all reals because typically domain is. My domain, again, where it looks like we're not going to go past negative 1 on the x, so greater than negative 1. And there you go. There's all that. Okay, thank goodness we are at the end of this one. This was a long one, like I said, and I'm sorry about that, but there was a lot of things that were going to go on. Now, like I said at the beginning of this film, in the YouTube link in the description, I will put 
a link to the graph paper that I had for this for this video. So if you guys want to grab a copy of it and download it and print it, so then that way you can do that. Otherwise, I mean, you're more than welcome to use any graph paper you want, but you can use, again, I thought it'd be a little simpler for you. Just trying to look out for you. So that's it for now, and I will see you in the next video.